Hello Wanderers, before we get into today's episode, we wanted to go over a few things with you guys. We have an ever-expanding Discord server, built with some pretty awesome people. We'll leave an updated link in the show notes. Also, our Patreon has been updated with new perks. Patrons now have access to not only shoutouts and early episodes, but now exclusive content like monthly original tales and HD posters. We also currently have a Patreon goal, where when reached, Scott will do an Entity Tier List episode. So, if that interests you, consider checking it out. To send us off, we have a merch store along with a YouTube channel, both will be linked in the show notes. That's all the announcements we have. Thank you all for listening, and let's get back to the episode. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Traveler's Guide to the Backrooms where we try to go over and explain the lore of the many levels and entities within. My name is Sharp A3, an MEG AI processing system, and in today's tale we'll be continuing where we left off in the tale, The Church. If you haven't heard part 1 yet, we suggest you check it out. This tale starts off in the perspective of a FOJ member, during the heyday of the old church. It's unknown just how long ago this was, but we get some light shined on just before whatever happened within the church. So, with that introduction out of the way, let's get into the tale. I can remember that day so clearly. It's about the only one that still stands out in my memory now. You might think that the mind would pick a pleasant moment to immortalize, but no, it's the awful ones that never seem to die. I was young then, still a promising initiate within the then flourishing followers of Jerry. I had just completed some kind of important ceremonial mission, and they saw it to reward me for the time I'd spent with them afterward. I recall being so honored by it at the time, a part of me couldn't believe that they had noticed my escapades amongst the sea of other initiates. Hell, some part of me is still surprised by that. They sent me to receive my reward at a church called Jerry's Salvation. Back then, it was an expansive sanctuary where all of us could worship and pray in singularity. It was the kind of place where all the younglings such as myself wanted to be stationed at, if only for a chance to meet the High Council and bask in the glory of the building itself. And here I was, walking through the filled pews of that very church, the whole building filled to the brim with spectators of all notoriety within the followers. All gathered there to watch my moment of glory. It felt like heaven. No, it was heaven. My whole life was ahead of me. Ready to be destroyed. I turned to my right, where Father Raven stood next to me, ready to deliver a most prestigious gift on behalf of Sinclair Beckett herself. All the work and perseverance I had sunk into the group thus far had finally come to a climax, and I could never have been happier about it. The father produced a small silver box from within his coat and presented it in front of me. I opened it, and was met with the sight of a glass cannon, a highly respected symbol of power within the group. I'd never before seen one in person, but frequently heard whispers of the men who carried them, they'd fire one shot, leaving the gun destroyed and the target obliterated through flames. To say it was an honor would be an understatement. It really meant the whole world to me. I thanked the father and gripped the weapon, tears welling up in my eyes. And as I did so, a group of Argos's knights burst into the church. So, looks like before whatever happened within the church, there was a huge ceremony to celebrate a member for their completion of an important mission. Then just as the ceremony was complete, the Knights of Argos decided to make a surprise visit to the church. It isn't said what happened after the Knights busted in, as the tale switches perspective once more. Now being in the point of view of the god killer mentioned back in part 1, though it's not really clear who is speaking at the moment. With that quick rundown out of the way, let's hop into the next section of the tale. I can see you. You, in all your glory and frustration. Your armor, shining. Your knives, glistening. Though your memory has faded with time and body has tired with age, your soul has not changed at all. You are still angry with yourself. You are still hateful towards the world. You were wrong. Though it takes all your willpower to do so, you manage to push open the rusted double doors and face down Alistair as he beckons you from the end of the hallway. He didn't know that you'd been following him, tracking his footsteps and mapping out his every move. But he's going to make the most of the situation regardless. He is going to kill you. Your armor cracks as your feet push themselves further into the building's rotten floorboards. 
Your breath, once silent and calculated, is now groaning loudly with anxious anticipation. Fate begins to call, begging for you to enter the abyss. Though this church was once considered a holy place, you can tell that no God is here to protect you now. Not even myself. Well, whatever the case may be with the ghost killer, it's obvious that whoever was speaking sees that someone doesn't have much longer to live, that the heretic will be the one to do them in. Though we're not given any details on how the battle will go. The perspective is once again switched. Now following the FOJ member at a later date than previously. It seems they've survived the initial attack and after some time, returned back to the church. For what reason, well, let's read and find out. Soured with age and weathered with scars, I stand across from the sanctuary that once housed my only family and gaze longingly at its now rusted entrance. Time has treated it about as well as it has treated me, evidently. I tighten the grip on my old glass cannon as a familiar target enters the building. The cannon had also rusted in time, but not due to any kind of frequent use. If anything, the opposite was true, I chose to hide it for ages, partly ashamed at the sight of it, and partly because I had decided to save its bullet for one singular person. The ghost killer. The bastard who waved the flag of Argos as his men plundered my home and attacked my people. It has been years, decades even, but the sight of him entering the church once again is more than enough to reignite my hatred. I had tried my hardest to avoid it for so very long, but now it is time for all those locked up emotions to take a hold of me. They command my every decision now, and give me only one prime directive. Go after him. Get the bastard. I load the weapon in response, for the first and last time. Closing words. So, that was the church part two. What do you guys think about this tale so far? It was nice to get a flashback into what was going on at the church before everything went down, as well as a little glimpse into what's going on with Ghost Killer. How do you think the FOJ member will factor into the battle to come? Will Ghost Killer be able to escape both from death, the witch is coming at him from two different way? And what exactly is the weapon known as a glass cannon? As always, we'll leave a link to the tail page so you guys can read it yourself. We highly suggest it. That's going to be all from us today, so thanks for listening and we hope to see you guys in the next episode. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and be safe out there. I would like to say a very special thank you to our patrons over at Patreon. Starting with the Wanderers at the $1 level, Ridiculous, Izzy Klein, Caleb Hills, Nathan Gear, Anakin Bumgardner, Sushi Penguini, Jeff Nordley, That One Random Guy, The Good Diamond, Brandon Berry, Shelby Girl Gaming, Coconut Cluster, Brandon Briars, and Lee. Next up are our senior explorers at the $8 level, Stephen Conver, Manacord, Zephyr the Cast Iron Crow, Ant, Undead, Jerigino Laws, and Rachel. Thank you all for going that extra step to support us and what we do. It's greatly appreciated. If you would also like to get your name shouted out at the end of the episode, get access to exclusive Patreon content and more, go become a patron on our Patreon. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.